Amen. <clears throat> well, it is wonderful to be here with you this morning. For those of you who don't know me, I'm John. I'm the assistant pastor here, and I have the privilege and honor of doing that, and also of uh, being able to share with you the word for today. So I, I'm excited. Uh, as I was preparing, I found the, the key verse that I'm going to be going through here today, and it reminded me of a trip I took a few years back uh, before I had a, a couple kids of my own. My wife and I planned on doing a trip to the UK where we did Ireland, England, and Scotland. It was just an awesome time we spent there, and we took specific interest when we were there in seeing the different castles that they, they had built you know, all throughout there. There's tons of them all over the place. I highly recommend it. It was a ton of fun. But when I was there, it's just like inspiring to see these structures that have been there for hundreds and hundreds of years. They've withstood the test of time, the wind, the storms, in some cases even the waves. They're built like right into the water there and everything. It's incredible to see all this. And the reason those have withstood the test of time is because they were built with intentionality. They were built wisely, right? They knew what elements were going to come against them, and they prepared for it. And there's a scripture found in Matthew chapter 7 that talks about this. And this is going to be our main verse for today. So if you have your Bibles, you can flip to it. If uh, not, you can see it up on the screens. It'll be there as well. It's, uh, we're going to start in verse 24 of Matthew chapter uh, 7. <clears throat> and it says this, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching because he taught as one who had authority and not as their teachers of the law. Let's take a moment and pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word today. And we come before you as individuals saying, we want to be wise builders of what you have called us to build. So I ask that you would show us, you would lead us, you would guide us today on how to apply the truths of your word to our lives for today so we can grow in this and become the people you've designed and created us to be. In your name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. So, <clears throat> as humans, I know this about you, because I know this about myself, is we don't want to waste our lives, right? We want to get to the end of our life and look back and say, look what I have to show for this, or look what has been accomplished, look what God did through me and in me. We, we don't want to look back and see destruction and foolishness and crumbles left behind us. We want to see something strong. We want to be wise builders. Because this is what Jesus says, and he says the key to this is if you not only hear my words, but you do them, you will be as a wise builder. So the reality is Jesus isn't telling us to build a structure here. He's not telling us to build a house. But what he is saying is that we are building our lives. And this is a metaphor, this is a parable that Jesus gave us to demonstrate that we are all actually building something. And that's the very first point I drew out of this, is we are all building something. And then you'll see, I put a little sub-point, is what materials are you using? I was uh, in construction for quite a few years, I owned my own construction company for a period of time, and when I was doing that, one of my biggest pet peeves is I would get a roofing job, and I'd go start taking off the shingles, and I found out, and this was very popular in certain time periods, I guess, is that they use particle board as roof sheathing. Uh, particle board, for those of you who don't know, is like little wood chips all glued up together and stuff it, rather than plywood. And the moment particle board gets wet or moisture in it or anything, it expands and becomes super soft. So I have stepped through dozens of particle board roofs just because they've been damaged, they've, they've been uh, uh, just crumbly. It was a, just a poor material choice for a roof, you know, of all places. You can use it in other applications, but on a roof, it, in my opinion, should just not be done. So, <laughs> uh, but this was something that I found all over the place. And I was thinking about this, and I found out it's the same in our lives, that Jesus gives us principles, he gives us teachings, he gives us truths and realities to live our life on, 
And, it, and it's as if, like, okay, here is the firm material. Here's what you should use in this application. But us as humans, as people, we, we hear that truth, and then we choose to go a different direction. We choose to use this cheaper material or this easier path to follow, and we apply it to our lives, and we actually build our structure with things that aren't meant to last, things that aren't meant to be used in those applications. And it causes us to stress later on in life. It might be five years down the line. It might be 30 years down the line. But eventually, that is not built to last because it wasn't built wisely with that intentionality to last the, the test of time. And one of the main ones, and you'll see this passage of Scripture that I opened with here, is uh, the famous ending to Jesus' debatably most famous sermon, the Sermon on the Mount. And that can be found in Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. It's three chapters long. I can't recommend enough to you to make time in your schedule this week to read over those passages. Matthew 5, 6, and 7, even on repeat this week, just to discover some of the elemental truths of building your house wisely. Because in context here, this is what Jesus is talking about. He's saying, if you hear my words and do them, specifically what I just spoke in this section of Scripture, and you apply it to your lives and you live by it, you will be as a wise builder, building his house. So this is essential for us. And within this is a famous principle called the golden rule. Has anybody here heard of the golden rule? Okay, the golden rule is uh, Jesus said it in this section of scripture. And he said, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. So put in, in even more plain language would be treat others the way you want to be treated. Right? You, you Treat other people the way you would hope they would treat you. Whether they have, whether they deserve it or not, this is the, the golden rule as a standalone thing. And in my house, I've got two daughters now. I've got a four-year-old and a two-year-old. And uh, we, we know the, the most important things to God, based on his principle, what he says in his word when he was talking to the Pharisees, he said is to love God the most, right? Love him with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength and to love others as you love yourself. So my goal as a dad is I want to impart those truths, those realities to my daughters. I want them to grow up knowing these two things are vitally important for you to have a great life, for you to have the life that God's designed for you to have is to follow these two principles and the other principles as well, but these two are so huge and important. So with this, Chloe and I have many conversations about treating others the way you want to be treated because this is part of how we love other people. And being four years old, she's at that age when her two-year-old sister walks into the room with a toy she wants. She can very easily go and overpower her and grab the toy, which often results in the younger one pulling her hair and then both of them crying and just this eruption of emotion that I'm sure any other parent here can uh, relate to. And so once all that's over, though, often what I try to do is I'll, I'll sit my oldest down, uh, get past the tears, get her calmed down. You know, everybody's you know, in a good spot now. And I say, Chloe, I understand it's not right that she pulled your hair. But at the same time, would you want somebody to come and take a toy? If she was bigger than you, would you want her to come and take this from you? To which the answer is always, no, but I want it. Right? And, and I think about that in my life too. And as I'm having this, these conversations with Chloe, as I'm going through these things, God starts putting his finger on things in my life that says, yeah, John, you have that same attitude. You know, the way you treated your wife wasn't the way you wanted her to treat you. The way you treated this person wasn't the way you would have wanted them to treat you. And you're not living by this principle the way that I've called you to live by. This is a, a weak area. This is an area that needs some demo and some reconstruction in so that you can live the life and be a wise builder towards the end of your life. Because he's called us to do this. So, and this is what Jesus is talking about. Not physical construction, not physical materials, but it's the principles, the truths, the realities of his word. Because many of us, and myself included, I, I dare say all of us in different areas in our life, have been building with flawed materials. We've built our life on a lie that somebody told us when we were younger. They said, you'll never be better than this, or you'll never be more than that, or you'll never be able to accomplish this, or you're just that, you're just this. And you've built your life around that when God says, I've got more for you. I've called you to be victorious. I've called you to be successful. I've called you to do great things in me. But you've hindered yourself because you've built on the wrong thing. And we all have different areas in our life that we choose to do this in. And there's a verse in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 that just 
blew me away when I read this in this context. It's uh, chapter 3, starting at verse 9. It says, For we are co-workers in God's service. You are God's field, God's building. By the grace God has given me, I laid a foundation as a wise builder, and someone else is building on it. But each one should build with care. For no one can lay any foundation other than that one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is, because the day will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire. The fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss. We are all building a house. Our life is being built, and we're building it using materials, using these truths, these principles, these ideals that Jesus gives to us, or the opinions that we have, the views that we have. We're choosing each and every moment of our, our day. Are we building wisely or are we building foolishly? Are we building by God's standards or by our own preferences and what we want, the easy way, the shortcut, the things that end up costing us more in the long run? Because this segues perfect into the second point that I want to make, which is this. It says, we will all have storms come and test our building materials. So choose wisely. We will all have storms come and test our building materials. This verse promises that. Every structure will be tested. If you're using the things that are, are perishable, the things that will be burned up, the things that will be washed away, it's going to crumble. And you're going to be suffering loss at the end. But if you build wisely, you build with, with the, the materials that God has given you, the truths, the principles, the realities of his work. You're going to experience joy and a reward even, it says, at the end for this. <clears throat> this was something in uh, the beginning of my Christian walk especially, I was not building. And I can tell you this honestly, that for me, the concept that I bought into was if I live my life according to God's principles, love him most, love others better than myself, if I'm doing what he's called me to do, he's going to protect me from the storm. He's going to make me exempt from the storms. I'm not going to have to go through these issues if I keep him first, which his word actually never said. In fact, it promises the opposite. And there's a verse in Matthew 5, right in the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus talks about, we're going to go to and read, and it says this, Matthew 5, starting at uh, verse 43, actually. <clears throat> you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that. Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. See, God promises specifically in verse 45 here. He causes the sun to shine on the, the just and the unjust. He sends the rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. Regardless of where you are, who, who you are serving, whether it's yourself, the, the devil, or God, you are going to experience some storms that are going to come and test the building materials of your life. We all are going to go through these things, and we all do. And a verse that helped me tremendously in this, I didn't put in my notes, but I'm going to quote it to you. It's actually in John chapter 16, and it's verse 33. And Jesus says, uh, In this world you will have trouble, or you will have hardship, but take heart, I have overcome the world. So Jesus says, I've given you the victory. I've overcome the world. I'm here for you. I'm with you. I'm in the boat with you when you're going through the storm. But you're going to have some storms. And I'll tell you, you know, the two things that I viewed as storms when I, I had that flawed thinking in my life was it was one of two things. It was, number one, okay, either there was something wrong with me. I wasn't doing something right, so, so I had this storm because I must be in sin. I must have, you know, not been paying attention to God's principle, and I was doing something wrong which at times that was the case, other times that wasn't, because the storms are coming regardless. Or number two, that God, God was neglecting me, which was a complete fallacy as well, because we know 
God loves his kids. We're his children. He does, he's not a neglectful father. He's not an absentee dad. He loves you, and he cares about you, and he'll never just abandon you or leave you. He promises that in his word. So with those two things being wrong, and once I saw these verses, and I realized the, the reality of a uh, verse in Romans as well, 8.28 says, for God works all things for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purposes, that sometimes these storms come, and it's in the storm that you realize, I've got a leaking roof that needs repair. I've got a faulty part of my building that I had no idea was there because I didn't have the storm come and show me. But all of a sudden, the storm comes, and you realize, oh, this needs some attention in my life. This needs some work. God's putting his finger on this and saying, yeah, I'm allowing the storm to come. I, I'm not you know, sending this to punish you, but I'm allowing it to come so you can be made aware that these are some areas, these are some spots that you need to work on. Because I love you and I want you to be a wise builder. I want you to do your part as I do my part to illuminate these things to you so you can build the structure that's meant to last. Because God's called us to be a, a people of stability in the midst of unstable times. That's what today is all about. What today's message is called is we are called and destined to be people of stability. And this is the, the final point that I have in this message here, is we are designed by God for stability. Maybe you've noticed, maybe you haven't, but on a global level, there's a bunch of instability going on. Probably, I would venture to guess, on a personal level, in your sphere of influence, people you know, you see some instability around you. You know some people that are going through some stuff. Maybe you yourself personally, you're going through some stuff. You're feeling unstable. You're feeling like you, there's some instability in your life. And God's saying, I've called you for stability. Like those castles that I talked about in, in my introduction here today. They are strong fortresses of refuge. They're places that have been built strategically to last these storms. God has called your life to be that too. He's destined you for it. He's created you for it. Whether you're far along in years, or just getting started in your Christian walk, whatever it is, God has called you to be a, a place of stability because the world is in instability. It's in instability. And he, he's called us to, to reach them because God is always stable, right? And he's our source for it. So if we can build our lives according to his principles, he can use us to be a place of stability for the world that is in need of stability is in need of experiencing God's love that way. And there's a verse that I love that talks about this too. It's in 1 Corinthians 15. Just a couple verses. It's a verse 57 and 58. And it says, But thanks be to God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. I just love how it starts out. He's already purchased the victory for us. It's already won, and God doesn't lose. And he's placed his spirit within you. If you've given your life to him, his spirit resides within you. And if you're here now and you haven't given your life to him, and this is the first time you're hearing about this, come and see me at the end of service. I would love to help you walk along this journey of giving your life to him because it's the best, most rewarding thing you can do. And we are here for you. We would love to walk with you through that process. Um, it's the best decision you'll ever make in your life. <clears throat> but when we do this, the, the victory is already bought for us. And it's interesting because the New Testament says this all over. It says, so stand firm. Therefore, stand firm. As I say, we see this all through the epistles, all through the New Testament, because this talks about our role in this, our part to play is that God does his part. He's given us the instructions. He's given us the, the blueprint, the materials to follow, how to do this. And it's our job to apply it and live it in our lives. I had mentioned earlier, some of you are, are you've built entire parts of your life on a lie that somebody told to you, on, on a lie that you believe, something else that somebody put on you that's contrary to the word of God. And God, even right now, is putting his finger on it and saying, this needs to change. I see you differently. I love you. I've called you to great things. But you need to build your life this way instead of that way. And there's a tearing down, a deconstruction, a demo of that way of life, that, that mindset that has built your structure in a certain way. 
and then you have to rebuild it up. And it can be painful at times. It can be hard. It can be a walking through. It can be involve talking to somebody about it. It can be involve forgiving somebody for something wrong they've done to you. It can involve some hurtful, dark things in your life. But God has destined you for stability, and you're only going to get there if you'll do his work, if you'll do his word, applying his principles to your life. Because he has called you for this. Back at the beginning of this year, there's a prophetic word given right here that uh, I'm going to paraphrase. I'm not going to quote it uh, word for word, but uh, I'm going to paraphrase it. And what it was, was that there are things that are going to happen this year that we are completely unprepared for. And the only way we could be prepared for it is through spending time in the secret place with God. Is by hearing from his spirit, having him speak to us, and then being able to prepare us for what those were going to come, what was going to come up. And I instantly resonated with the, the concept of stability. That we're in unstable times. We're in unstable situations all the time. There's instability all around us. But God has called us to be people of stability. And the only ways we can get there are two ways. Two ways that we can grow in stability. The first one is to know the reality of his truth, his principles, the word. So to be in the Word, to learn the language of His principles, to know what He's telling us to do, because as we read through the Word, we have it illuminated to us that, okay, I need to love others more than myself. The, the golden rule, the different things pop out to us, and we say, oh, I'm not living by this way. I need to get in line with this, because it's God's Word. And that's a key component, something we can't overlook. The second, though, because that by itself isn't enough either, the second is He's placed His Spirit within us. If we're believers, he's placed his spirit within us, and we need to rely on hearing the voice of God as well. That's what that Friday night Holy Spirit activation class is all about. That's what uh, we as a church staff are here for you. If you need any help in this, maybe you've been walking with God for a bunch of years, maybe you just got started. Whatever your situation is, if you say, hey, I struggle to hear the voice of God. I struggle, like, I read the Bible, and it just feels like gibberish to me. I don't get it. You know, I, I'm, I'm not getting anything out of it. I don't understand it. Get some help. We are here to help you. We would love to. Write it on your Connect card. Put it in the box. Say, I need help with Bible reading. I need help with hearing God's voice. Put it in there. We will help you. Or get some close friends together and say, listen, I'm struggling in this area. I need some help. I need somebody to walk alongside of me with this. And you will be amazed what God will do as you intentionally make an effort to build the, the house of your life wisely that God will give full resources, full equipment, everything you need to walk in the fulfillment of what God has for you. Because he's called you to be a place of stability in an unstable time. He's called you for great things, but it's only as you commit to this process of building your house wisely that you'll accomplish what he has for you. So, I want to invite you right now just to uh, stand to your feet. And I want to, in closing, ask you a question that I tend to always ask when I close out a service. And it's, what is the Holy Spirit saying to you right now? What is God saying? What's he putting his finger on? Because there's so many principles, so many truths, so many things that it could get overwhelming. I know some personality types, you, you hear a sermon like this and you're like, yeah, let me get in the Word, let me find the things and I'll make a checklist. And then, great, I got this one, I got that one. Others, you see a checklist and all of a sudden you're overwhelmed. You're like, this is too much, I'll never get there. And you just give up on it. So I want to challenge you today, regardless of your personality type, regardless of what you're going through, ask God, show me one area that I need to develop, that I need to be a wise builder on, a, a spot that I have been building the wrong way and I need to do work in the right way. Now with every eye closed and head bowed, I want to invite you just to, you can do it silently, you can do it out loud, whatever you're comfortable with, you just say, God, what are you speaking to me today? And Lord Jesus, I know you are speaking to your people today. That for those of us who are here and watching online, that you want to do an amazing work, that you want to see us as wise builders, building the house of our lives according to your principles, your truths, and your realities, God. So right now, I ask the Holy Spirit, you would illuminate to each and every one of us one area 
that we need to grow in. And we would make this a habit, that we would go to you daily saying, God, show me what you have for me this day. Not just at the end of a sermon, but in every prayer time. Every time we spend intentional time with you saying, God, I need to hear from you. I need to know what you're calling me to do. I need to know the way to live so that I can look back as a wise builder over my life. Because you have called us to do that. So help us to have intentionality in this, God, to put you first, to seek you above everything else, and to ask for help when we need it. Because we know you've called us to do this together as well. God. We're not an island to ourselves, so help us to help one another, to not judge, to not uh, put down others, but to build them up in you, Lord Jesus. We commit to you today, Lord. Whatever that one area is you're showing me, you're showing each and every person here, we ask that you would illuminate it so we can begin to build it in the right direction. Bless your people as you supernaturally empower them to accomplish this amazing work that you have already purchased the victory in, God. We commit to it. We thank you for them. Thank you for this wonderful day that we can spend together. Just bless them as they go about your business and building the life you've called them to build together. In your name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. If there's anything we can pray for you for, please feel free to come up. We would love to. We are here for you. We love you guys. God bless you as you go about your week.